Okay, we're going to talk about boiling point, we're going to talk about freezing point, and we're going to talk about electrolytes. Uh, the changes of boiling point and freezing point are sometimes called colligative properties because um, they depend on how much stuff is in the solution, but let's get started. So remember we have ionic and we have covalent or molecular. So covalent and molecular mean the same thing. Ionic substances dissociate into ions. Um, covalent substances do not. Polar covalent, they have charges and nonpolar do not. When dissolved again, covalent or molecular substances stay together as molecules, so they just stay as one unit. When dissolved, ionic substances dissociate or break apart into ions. Something that is an electrolyte means it conducts electricity when it's dissolved in water. And there are three things, acids, bases, and salts. Okay. Uh, we're obviously focusing on salts um, in this unit, but we'll look at acids and bases in the next unit. Okay, so anything that is an acid, a base, or a salt is always an electrolyte. Now, when we dissolve um, substances, if something is polar, then it will dissolve in water. If something is ionic, it will also dissolve in water. Nonpolar things will not dissolve in water. So if I dissolve something that is um, nonpolar, I need something that is also nonpolar in order to dissolve it. But remember, if something is, is an electrolyte, it is an acid, a base, or a salt. So this is a salt, so it makes an electrolyte. This is sugar. Sugar is covalent or molecular, so it is a non-electrolyte. Those dissociated ions allow the solution to conduct electricity. Okay, so electrolytes, acids, bases, salts, allow it to conduct electricity. We need those separated ions. So if we have a non-electrolyte and we hook it up like this, the solution with some leads and a power supply, no glowing light bulb. Whereas if we have an electrolyte, an acid, a base, or a salt, and we do the same setup, the light bulb glows because it is an electrolyte. Now, we can have strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. We won't focus too much on this unit, but I do just want to introduce it. So a strong electrolyte would be a strong base, a strong acid, or every single salt. I don't care if the salt is soluble in water or not, because you know what? That little tiny bit that dissolves is going to make it an electrolyte. Okay, now what is a weak electrolyte then? Well, a weak acid or a weak base. So we get into this next unit. And then a non-electrolyte is anything that is covalent, anything that is molecular. Molecular and covalent are the same thing, remember? So even insoluble salts, so from table F, even insoluble salts, they are strong electrolytes because a little bit that dissolves will dissociate and it is a strong electrolyte. Now, tap water is an electrolyte because it has stuff in it. So it's why you shouldn't swim in thunder and lightning because that will conduct through the electricity. The electricity will conduct through the water. You can get electrocuted. In this unit, again, we are going to focus on salt, the ionic compounds, as the electrolytes. So what is conductivity? Well, it means the ability to conduct an electrical current. Ionic substances dissociate and conduct electricity. Pure water, so water that has been purified, does not. But tap water does. Any salt, an acid, a base. So sodium chloride dissociates in water, right? We talked about this a little bit before. Um, so dissociates into its Na plus ion and its Cl negative ion. Now silver nitrate dissociates into the Ag plus ion and this came from table E, so it stays stuck together. So NO3 negative. The number of ions does affect the conductivity, so the more ions, the better the conductor. So salts dissolve, release ions. Less ions, 
less conductivity. More ions, more conductivity. So one way to do that is just add more solute, right? So if I put salt in water and I add more salt, all of a sudden it's a better conductor, okay? The other way is whether how many ions it actually dissociates into. So if I use the same amount of all of these substances, okay, and I want to determine which one would be the best conductor, I need the most ions, right? I find that from the coefficients. So this is the substance, but here are the ions. So one and one. So that has two ions, one and one. This has two one and two. This is not an ion, this is water, so this has three. One and one, two. One and two, three. Two and one, three. One and one. This is not an ion, that's water, so two. So which substances would be the best conductors? Remember the ones with the most ions determined by the coefficients. Remembering to ignore this because that's not an ion, that's water. Okay, so it would be this one which has three, this one which has three, and this one which has three. So looking at this one, which ionic compound would be the best conductor? Okay, what you have to know is what it separates into. So here's where it would separate into this and this. It would separate here into this and this. Table E will help me. Separates here into this and this. Separates here into this and this. So do you have an idea? It is this one. Did you figure that one out? Why? Well, here's how they separate. This gives me a total of two ions, two ions, three ions, two ions. Better conductor has more ions. So here, which solution is the best conductor of an electrical current? So let's look here. The amount of water is the same in every answer choice, so I'm going to ignore it. it it's irrelevant because it's all the same. Look here. It's all NaCl, so that doesn't have any effect, so I'm going to ignore it. The only thing that is changing is right here, the number of moles. So. Remember, if there's more ions, there's more conductivity. So which one of these moles would have the most ions? Well, the biggest number. So can you tell from looking at those which is the biggest one? Okay, as water is added to a 0 0.10 molar NaCl aqueous solution, the conductivity, okay, so remember, more ions, better conductivity. So if I'm adding water, am I adding ions? No. So it's going to decrease because the concentration of ions decreases. The water solution of which of the following substance is the best conductor of electricity? So best conductor, ionic, salts, acids, and bases. So do you see which one is ionic? Do you recognize which one is ionic, metal, and a nonmetal? All right, now let's look at the colligative properties. Okay, I kind of introduced that word. So, what do I mean by colligative properties? Well, it's a characteristic of the solution, it depends on the number of particles. All right, um, the more particles, the bigger effect. Okay, so to recap, higher concentration has a bigger effect on the colligative property. So freezing point. If there are more solute particles, I have a lower freezing point. So the rule for colligative properties is freezing point goes down. So if I have more solute particles, the freezing point goes down even more. So it's called freezing point depression, okay? The freezing point goes down, okay? So why? So just a little recap. So here's pure water right here. Here's water with salt particles. Okay? And so you can see the salt keeps the water molecules from forming ice crystals. So the freezing point goes down. That means it has to get colder in order for it to freeze. 
So this has some useful applications. It's why they put salt on roads. It helps to lower the freezing point so the ice will melt. We can make ice cream like this. If we fill the um, outer bag with ice and salt, we make it even colder and we can freeze things like half and half into ice cream with some like flavoring to make it even more delicious. Okay, antifreeze. So this is put in your car to keep uh, that from freezing. So it lowers the freezing point. You can see right here, remember the freezing point of um, water in Fahrenheit is 32. So look how much colder it would have to get because you add the solute, you have particles in there, it's gonna keep the water molecules from um, forming crystals and ice, so they it will need to be colder for it to freeze, which is good, because anyway, where I live in Buffalo, it gets below 32 all the time. And imagine if the windshield fluid or the antifreeze in my car would freeze all that time, it would be that would be rough. So this has to get much colder, okay, before it freezes. Okay, also it explains why alcohol, you could put it in the freezer. So if I take a glass of water and I put it in the freezer, it's going to freeze. But because of the solute particles, also the percentage of ethanol, um, if I put a bottle of vodka in the freezer, it's not going to freeze. It's just going to get really cold. All right, boiling point. This one means the more solute polar particles, the higher the boiling point. So it is called, okay, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation. So think about it like this. A freezing point is low, it's cold, so freezing point goes lower. Boiling point is hot, it's warm. Boiling point goes higher. So freezing point depression, boiling point elevation. Freezing point depression, boiling point elevation. And similarly, remember how for the freezing point going down, it's because the solute particles were in the way and didn't let the ice crystals form? In this case, with the solute particles, they get in the way of the liquid particles escaping into a gas. All right, so here's a little video. Remember, adding solute to a solvent raises the boiling point. Boiling point elevation, freezing point depression. Boiling point elevation, freezing point depression. We add salt to water sometimes when we're cooking, not to make the water boil faster. Extinct, wrong. Why do we do it? It raises the temperature. The food will cook a little faster. So vapor pressure. Vapor pressure has to do with uh, whether or not something is going to evaporate, how quickly it evaporates. If I have more solute particles, it lowers the vapor pressure. So the solute again gets in the way of the particles escaping. So there's a lower vapor pressure. It takes more for it to boil, higher boiling point. So those two are kind of related. Remember the colligative properties depend on the number of moles or the concentration in the solution. So we have more particles, effect is greater. So if I only add um, you know, one little spoonful of salt, barely any effect. If I add a whole cup of salt, greater effect. So colligative properties, remember, depend on the number of particles. Um, there are greater changes if you add ionic versus covalent. So for example, if I add uh, 10 grams of sugar to one solution and 10 grams of salt to another solution, and I wanna see which one boils at a higher temperature, it's gonna be the salt because the salt, those 10 grams divided each part, individual particle separated into ions. So I have more particles. The sugar is gonna to stay together so compared to distilled water, an aqueous salt solution has what? 
remember, separates into ions better conductivity. A beaker contains a dilute sodium chloride solution at one atmosphere. What happens to the number of particles in the solution um, and the boiling point of the solution as more sodium chloride is dissolved? So if I add more sodium chloride, the number of particles would increase. So this makes no sense, right? Now you should remember the other part. What do you remember happens to boiling point? Elevation, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation. Which aqueous solution has the highest boiling point? So I get the highest boiling point with the most ions, right? So first of all, I have one molar or two molar. So, okay, I know two molar is going to give me more. But now I have two different substances. So which one will give me more ions? That one. Which aqueous solution has the lowest freezing point? Remember, I get the lowest freezing point from the most number of particles. Well, covalent, covalent. This one is a, um, a weak acid. It's an acid. Um, and then I have this one. So which one is going to give me the lowest freezing point ionic and compared to the boiling point and freezing point of water a CaCl2 aqueous solution what happens boiling point elevation freezing point depression boiling point elevation freezing point depression so boiling point elevation freezing point depression and that's boiling point, freezing point, electrolytes, colligative properties, Whew, so much going on. I hope you learned something new today.